Rare. Why is it so hard for others to catch up in rare earth refining? Why is China so hard to surpass in rare earth refining? Hey everyone! I'm Lao Lu, and today we're going to talk about a serious topic, rare earth refining technology. Recently, the US, the EU, and Japan have been aggressively laying out their rare earth supply chain strategies, even publicly announcing their intentions to break free from their reliance on China. This is not just a simple trade issue. It's a strategic game that concerns future technological competition and national security. We all know that from the smartphone in your hand to the most advanced military equipment, rare earths are the indispensable industrial vitamins. And the most critical, highest tech segment of the rare earth value chain is processing and refining. So, here's the question. What makes China's rare earth refining technology so strong? Do other countries truly have the ability to catch up, or even surpass China? How much of this is a technology gap, and how much is a cost trap? In the following sections, I will deeply analyze China's technological advantages and use real-world examples and data from Western countries to reveal the true nature of this rare earth chase. We will see that this is not just a technological contest, but a complex game involving capital, talent, environmental protection, and global supply chains. Let's first turn our attention to the past and look at the origins of rare earth refining technology. In the early days, rare earth smelting and separation technologies actually originated in Western countries. As early as 1946, after achieving industrialized automobile production, the U.S. discovered that adding cerium from system elements to steel made car parts more durable and stronger. At that time, China's industrialization level was still far behind, and the gap with Western countries in the rare earth field was enormous. They were already applying rare earths in industrial production, while we hadn't even completed the construction of our basic industries. But who would have thought that in just 50 years, China would achieve a reversal from being backward to becoming a leader? The story behind this is fascinating. At that time, during an inspection of an iron ore mine in Inner Mongolia, Chinese technicians discovered a large amount of light rare earth elements in the ore and began to figure out how to mine and refine them. Initially, China tried using Western separation methods, but the cost was prohibitively high. What to do? Chinese technicians are not afraid of challenges. With a quick change of thought, they found a different path. They abandoned the purification technology using hydrochloric acid and switched to using a cheaper plastic purification technology. Hey, it turned out to be quite effective. Not only was separation feasible, but the cost was also reduced by several orders of magnitude. This was a crucial step for China in rare earth refining technology, moving from imitation to innovation. After decades of development, China's rare earth purification technology has advanced by leaps and bounds, from initial exploration to later independent research and development and innovation. It has now reached a staggering level. A report from the American Size Think Tank shows that China accounts for 92% of global rare earth refining output, and its refining capacity for heavy rare earths is even more astonishing, reaching 99%. This means that in the global rare earth refining sector, China is in a near monopoly position, and this leading position has been held for over 20 years. Satellite images from the BBC show that the area of the rare earth mining site in Baotou, China, has doubled since the early 2000s. This reflects the vigorous development of China's rare earth industry and its continuously strengthening technical capabilities, which are essential to support such large-scale mining and production. And now, let's look at China's current rare earth refining technology, it's even more advanced. China's independently developed cascading extraction technology is like a magic key, greatly improving the efficiency and purity of rare earth element separation, making it far superior internationally. The application of new extraction and precipitation agents not only effectively avoids the problem of a large amount of three wastes pollution from traditional technology but also further improves the efficiency of rare earth separation and enrichment. These technologies are the crystallization of the wisdom of Chinese researchers and a key reason why China remains strong in the rare earth refining field. Moreover, China has unique advantages in rare earth resources, not only are the reserves abundant, but they also cover almost all elements, including both heavy and light rare earths. This is like playing a game where China not only has powerful equipment, technology, but also ample ammunition, resources, 
making it hard not to be strong. Having talked about China, let's look at other countries, especially Western nations, and their attempts to catch up in rare earth refining technology. First, the U.S. As a global technology powerhouse, the U.S. leads in many fields, but in rare earth refining, it has consistently been outmatched by China. The U.S. is not content with this and has been trying to find a way to break through. The U.S. has used the Defense Production Act to allocate funds to support rare earth projects, has pushed the Australian company Linus to build a new factory in Texas, and has even provided funding to Linus's U.S. subsidiary for the construction of light and heavy rare earth processing facilities. It seems the U.S. is determined to develop its domestic rare earth refining industry, but the reality is harsh. Although the U.S. has rare earth mines, such as the Mountain Pass mine, what happens after the ore is mined? The lack of processing capacity is a huge problem. As of 2024, the U.S.'s self-built smelting capacity can only produce 10 tons of neodymium praseodymium oxide, and its core separation technology still relies on Chinese patent licenses. The financial report of the U.S. rare earth company MP Materials shows that 98% of the 41,600 tons of rare earth concentrated mined in 2023 had to be exported to China for smelting. This is like a person who has great strength but no proper tools, they just can't get the job done. It's clear how difficult it will be for the U.S. to catch up in rare earth refining technology, and it's almost impossible to surpass China's leading position in the short term. Australia also has some strength in the rare earth field. Linus Rare Earths is especially seen as a promising contender that might break China's monopoly. On May 16 of this year, Linus announced on its official website that its factory in Malaysia had successfully separated and refined dysprosium oxide from rare earths for the first time. It also claimed that the new heavy rare earth separation technology had already been put into commercial use and was capable of mass production, with plans to achieve a breakthrough in terbium production next month. Western media cheered this news, as if China's status in rare earth separation was about to be shaken. But is that really the case? Let's analyze it carefully. In terms of production, China's annual separation and mining volume of heavy rare earths is around 15,000 to 20,000 tons, and with imports and recycling, the total volume is close to 30,000 tons. What about Linus? The company's planned annual heavy rare earth separation volume is only 1,500 tons, and this is just the planned amount, it's still a question of how much it can actually achieve. This level of output is just a drop in the ocean for a heavy rare earth consuming country like the US. In terms of cost, by comparing the annual reports of China's northern rare earth and Linus in recent years, the unit production cost for light rare earth oxides, REO, for Chinese companies can be controlled at $4 to $7 per kilogram, while Linus's cost is as high as $10 to $15. The subsequent environmental treatment costs are even ridiculously high. If the cost difference is so large for light rare earths, the gap between Linus and Chinese companies in the heavy rare earth sector is even bigger. Therefore, Linus's so-called technological breakthrough, for now, poses no threat to China's dominant position in the rare earth separation supply chain. European countries also face numerous challenges in rare earth refining technology. Although Europe recognizes the importance of rare earths and is trying to reduce its dependence on Chinese rare earths, it has no significant advantages in technology or resources. The R&D investment of European companies in rare earth refining technology is relatively limited, and they lack complete supply chain support. For example, if Europe wants to build its own rare earth separation plants, it not only needs to solve technical problems but also consider a series of issues such as raw material supply, environmental requirements, and production costs. These problems are intertwined like a tangled mess that cannot be untangled in a short time. Moreover, China has already formed economies of scale and technological barriers in rare earth refining technology, making it extremely difficult for European companies to break this situation. Japan also has its own plans in the rare earth field. Japan relies on China for 85% of its medium and heavy rare earth imports, which makes it feel uneasy. As a result, it has also begun to invest in rare earth projects in Australia and Vietnam and is working on rare earth recycling from electronic waste, with some progress. 
However, Japan faces problems similar to Europe, a lack of large-scale rare earth resources, and R&D is restricted by factors such as funding and talent. When it comes to rare earth refining technology, it will also be very difficult for Japan to catch up with China. From the above analysis, we can see that China's leading position in rare earth refining technology was not achieved overnight. It is supported by multiple factors, including abundant resources, advanced technology, large-scale production, and a complete supply chain. It is extremely difficult for other countries to catch up. However, with technology developing rapidly, we cannot afford to be complacent. I hope everyone will continue to pay attention to the development trends of rare earth refining technology. If you have any thoughts or new findings, feel free to leave a comment and discuss them. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.